Welcome to the UCSD Coastal Science Campus Greenhouse. Um, starting off in terms of some plants, butterflies and bees. Um, before we go and check out kind of the beginning of all of our greenhouse stuff, which starts with the soil storage room. So we're heading in here. Um, and the main thing I wanted to start off with in here is inside this cooler freezer is all of our seed storage. So um, before we start planting things out um, and after we've cleaned all that seed, they get stored in here. So we've got, um, somehow this is organized, but species like Grindelia stricta, that's gum plant. Um, we've got Trifusaria hyacinthina, Tritillaria varic, well, yeah, something like that. Um, Juncus, all these different species. There's layers and layers of boxes here of seed. Um, this is our long-term storage area for seed. So uh, when Nate's looking for uh, some species to go plant, he's starting right in here. So, um, Nate, take it away. So in the greenhouse today, finishing up the last of the transplanting, uh, these are some flats of things that we've transplanted this, uh, this past month. Uh, got a bunch of different stuff, and this is kind of a feel for what it looks like in our germination station. Uh, basically start everything in flats. Uh, we want kind of to just like allow root expansion and just, it's much easier to start like this because if you start immediately in these trays, you are likely gonna have some, uh, some seeds that will not germinate. So being able to germinate a bunch of seeds and then selectively take everything that looks good uh, kind of saves us a little more time. Uh, it's definitely, it's kind of the standard in a lot of propagation practices. Um, but today we uh, unfortunately aren't gonna be transplanting most of these. Because uh, of coronavirus, we are unable to have the workforce to plant all these plants. It's kind of a huge bummer. Uh, I've been working on a couple of different rare wildflower species, uh, Calendrinium menziesii, uh, Circium quercitorum, which is a brownie thistle. Uh, so commonly you see thistles and they are an invasive plant. Uh, there's actually a lot of them that are native to California, and they're super stunning. Uh, definitely, definitely worth looking up. Circium quercitorum, check it out. So this is how all of our plants start. Uh, basically these big flats, and uh, we've got all these grasses here, Grastus palins, which you're seeing in the grassland video, as well as Dystampsia cespitosa. So these plants definitely look much different at an immature stage and it's kind of hard to get a feel for them unless you see them in a mature state. So definitely get out there and see if you can find some plants. Here is a flat of one of our rush species. This is Juncus effusus. Uh, as you can tell, they are pretty small plants. They're super slow growing, probably one of the slowest that we do grow here at the reserve. Um, they, yeah, we usually start these pretty early, uh, probably around September, kind of around uh, the end of summer, so that they can be transplanted and ready to go around February or March. Although this past year we had a huge loss where most of our wetland species were killed when the wetlands flooded and huge hordes of ducks came and just pretty much ate all vegetation and pooped all over everything. So we have a huge dead zone in the middle of our plot and our plan was to regrow all the species and plant them, uh, but unfortunately that is now on hold. So we have these, a lot of these wetland species that just might not get used. Here is a flat of one of our grasses. This is Agrostis palins. Uh, as you can tell, much faster growing than the Juncus. They were sown around the same time. Grasses are super vigorous. Uh, they are often producing under C4 photosynthesis, uh, which is uh, something you guys should check out. Basically means these plants are growing at a much faster rate and are able to photosynthesize much more efficiently than C3 plants, which are often dicots or have uh, like the broadleaf ones you usually see around. So in our seed collections, we're not always the most uh, 
accurate in what we collect. As you can see here, we have a weed. This is likely uh, Sanchez or uh, some sort of thistle species. Just kind of finishing up a tray of some phacelia. Uh This is basically the technique when we're trying to do our transplanting. Uh, pull out plants from the tray. You make a little well in the filled cones and go ahead and fill that back in. Basically just trying to come in here and make all these wells for the roots. When you put the plants in, you wanna make sure that the roots are going down and not curling back up, because if that happens, that's gonna be a pretty unhappy plant, because uh, gravitropism, like plants uh, have that innate ability to sense gravity and grow in their proper direction. Uh, that's why those upside down tomato planters are pretty much a huge gimmick. Uh, <clears throat> so, basically wanted to come in and just fill these flats. So there's 98 cells to a tray. Uh, yeah, we are pretty much slowing down production unfortunately, but getting a lot of these annual species sowed out and planted in some of our plots will really help to bring up the biodiversity. A lot of these annual species are heavy seeders, um, so basically they're going to be pretty reliable in terms of restoration capability. Uh, the large thing that really plays a factor is allowing them to have habitat. So grasses, uh, invasive grasses, are usually really good competitors for these guys and force them out because they are so dominating. So so when seedlings are at this early stage, you want to make sure that you're really gently watering them. Uh, I've just transplanted them and they're all in their pots. I'm going to come in and do this light watering can rinse. As you can see, seedlings kind of will fall over. Uh, that's all pretty normal. Just kind of, if they're sitting in dirt, pop them back up. But for the most part, they'll just like spring back up uh, as they kind of start to get established. So today we planted Phacelia. Uh, Circeum quercitorum and Calendrinia menziesii. Uh, these are all grassland species that are found on the coast and they were all collected on the coast within the past couple of years. Uh, basically we want to do about one or two watering cans on this. You don't need to go too deep this yet, mainly because our soil was pre-mixed with moisture to make sure that we have an environment that is hospitable to all of the seedlings that have been in. So with all of our plantings, we want to make sure to label stuff so that we know what it is, when it was sown, and when it was transplanted. So the first thing we do is add our species code, uh, which is usually the first two letters of each part of the scientific name. So first two of the genus and first two of the species. So the Phacelia is Phacelia, and it's an unknown species, so SP. Uh, the date it was sowed was the 5th of March. And today is the 31st. So 26 days from seed to transplant, that's pretty good. Uh, Circeum quercitorum as well, C-I-Q-U. Uh, that was March 5th. And today's the 31st. We also want to make sure that we write YLR on our tags because at the UCSC greenhouse facilities, we are not only growing plants for this uh, reserve, we are also growing plants for research as well as a multitude of other things. So it's good to be completely accurate as we label everything. Uh, and Calangenium and ZCI. So today's the day that all these plants are getting moved out. As you saw in the video about two weeks ago, uh, I had just transplanted these right here, this Phacelia species, and they've grown quite a bit. And that's particularly because they're in this climate controlled environment that really allows them to grow to their maximum potential. So after seedlings are transplanted, they're all moved on to these tables where we have all of our plants for the season. Uh, they basically stay here for about a month or so, but it really depends on what time of season. So if this was winter, we'd be leaving all these seedlings in here for likely, I don't know, maybe two or so months. 
things really slow down in the winter due to the low light levels as well as the low temperature. Uh, light and temperature are definitely some of the key players in seed germination. A lot of the wildflowers really start to get activated after a little fertilization or cold stratification, uh, as well as a lot of other species just really reacting to uh, higher soil temperatures. Um, the soil start to warm up, seeds definitely start to get that cue to wake up and start the season. So, as you can see here, we've got a lot of different stuff, mainly forbs, some grasses, and then a lot more grasses. We have tons of this campion across this over here. So, right here are the seedlings I just transplanted. These guys are about two weeks or so old in transplant, uh, kind of getting a little bit older as we move down the line here. Uh, here are some sticky monkey flowers that were transplanted and as you can see once the plants are on their own and not competing with others they really start to flourish they take off and that's why it's also really important when you're transplanting seedlings to only put one plant per pot because you get much better growth and much healthier plants uh, so here are some yarrow plants this is all of our grass deschampsia as well as a grostis. Uh, something to definitely keep an eye out for are weeds. Pretty easy to notice when some grass is definitely much more distinct amongst the others. Uh, gonna have to pull those out, but for the most part, we have some really good consistent native plants. This right here is Baccarus pilularis. Uh, those are those really big shrubs we saw in the first week in our scrub community. They are really slow growing actually. These guys have been around since uh, September. Uh, yeah, so they are not very big. They're about an inch tall, but uh, once they get in the ground and get going, they really start to grow pretty exponentially. Uh, this is Artemisia douglasii. Uh, that really charismatic, super great smelling scrub or or plant. Uh, yeah. We also have some really cool wildflowers that we've been starting to grow. These are Clarkia davii, which is a really small, like minute flower. But uh, Clarkias are really beautiful wildflowers and they use them super heavily. Uh, definitely really great to have in a restoration plant. Another awesome character to have around here is Horkelia californica. Some people smell, say it smells like maple syrup. I think it definitely kind of does. It's kind of a celery maple syrup smell. Uh, it's definitely still good. So this year has certainly been a big year for younger looking as we recently just inherited these two greenhouses. They are 10 by 20 feet and they are glass houses. This one kind of has a pink hue to it. That's because it was originally outfitted with uh, glass that had solar uh, panel stuff on it. Uh, we don't really use those, although they are solar powered. Uh, we propagate vegetatively in most of these because they're not a sterile environment. In our other greenhouses, we try and keep things super clean due to the fact that there's a lot of fungal pathogens as well as other uh, potential sources of infection. We want to make sure that our restoration sites are staying clean and pathogen free 
uh, to ensure the health of our plants and ecosystem. So Val, well, most of our plants are grown from seed. We do grow things vegetatively. Uh, that's mainly in response to the fact that we have had some really, some issues germinating certain species like Juncus sipioides or iris leaf Juncus. This one is pretty distinct amongst the other Juncus species uh, because they have a very flat leaf, much like an iris plant. Uh, they grow really well from vegetative cuttings or root cuttings because they are uh, stoloniferous, uh, which is like these underground stem sections. Uh, moving back here, we have some Carex barbarae. Uh, this is a really nice Carex species that gets to about two or so feet tall and has these really long inflorescences. It's a really awesome plant. We just propagated a bunch, and they might have to wait till next year, but they're definitely going to get out there. Uh, we also have some uh, Scissorinchium vellum, or uh, blue-eyed snakegrass. Uh, super good one. These are all grown from seed, although they were up in a greenhouse facility that is not sterile, and we just didn't want to risk potentially exposing any of our other plants to that.